Hey, what is up everybody, Blades for here, and today I bring you guys another video of Persona 5X. Inside today's video, guys, we're gonna be talking about is Mesa worth the summon here, pretty much, or everything you really need to be doing in order to see if this character is worth it. And right off the bat, I've done something similar to this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and address it. This character does, is worth a lot of what he actually can do. The only issue is he has his highs and he does have his lows. Now, I've been talking about this character quite a lot, of course, on my channel. So you guys probably see a decent gist of what he can do, but after collecting a few more at least informational things and having my friends test out some things on CN, I can actually go ahead and give you guys more of a definite answer about this character and more or less what is worth getting for him. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So Mesa is going to be a new physical five-star damage dealer that can actually inflict, at least inflict a couple DLT statuses as well, which is really, really good seeing that is kind of the first character that we've had like this. Like we have, of course have a DLT character, AKA being Sapia. We also have DLT or at least damagers, such as physical damagers like Skull being into the game. The only issue with this, we've never had something like this kind of put into one character that also was undeniably good this character not only can of course do both of those things and it also proc bleed here the first of its actual kind in the game but also can increase damage on his other skills based on which mode he is in this in general makes him really really powerful and i feel like a lot of people kind of don't really you know take this into account until you really get to try him out yourself now, he does have his strengths and weaknesses or his pros and cons with this, in which me being devil's advocate, let's get to the cons first. Mesa being at least one of these characters that have came in here, here, he's a really good unit, but the main con about this character is currently what, who we have. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. We don't have many characters that can really be his side to side best in slots. There's only a couple which we do have and they were very limited of course at this point in time because they were certain moments where they kind of surprised us. For example, Cord. Cord is one of his best in slot characters here and the reasoning for this is because she's actually able to allow us to go ahead and use our highlight a ton more with Mesa and this allows us to get those bleed stacks in order to actually use the skill three a lot quicker and then of course get a lot more of that huge off damage that we're looking for the character. Of course, a lot of people could not get Cord, and the main reasoning for this was because Cord came literally like right after Makoto, which was everyone's dream person here that is still pretty much number one in the DPS category. Cord was one of those units that was a must summon, and a lot of people didn't have enough time to get that character right after going just absolutely haywire over Makoto. So Cord is already one of the issues. But the other issue at this is also the lack of people having Summer Moko. Now the Summer Banners recently did just go away, so it's not too long ago with this one, but this character in general was not leaving a good taste in people's mouths when it came down to at least community. Reasoning is, is because she had room to grow, which now she's getting that room to grow here. But at the time when she was released, which was about at least two patches ago or so, she was not looked at the best. The reasoning for this, of course, is because with her kit, it's very involved on the EHR setting in which not many characters at the time needed EHR. Now, Mesa and later on Haru do need these ER EHR buffs here, making them really, really useful for the best in slots for at least Mesa, but a lot of people did not summon for these said characters. That is where things can be a little bit of a problem for Mesa, because if you don't have the actual correct teammates with him, he immediately can deal a lot less damage and actually be a lot less worth it, especially for the people who did not summon for this. Now, in the case that you did summon for him, well then you got yourself a lot of things here, but that's not the only cons that came with this character. Well, as I keep talking about with the Executioner mode, Executioner mode is one of the modes that I've shown multiple times with him that when he is in this said mode, much like how we have at least Makoto in her form that she's able to swap off on her second turn, Executioner mode goes off, of course, the bleeds and things that he's able to do here. This mode actually is less effective, especially when it comes down to at least the skill two. Skill one is not really affected, but the skill two is where things are a little bit of a problem. Because if you don't go ahead and actually have your Executioner mode in the right way with the skill two, you can't really use him 
the like you can't use him effectively or at least use him to the perfect amount that you could possibly do so the reason i state this is because without at least having a minimum of a one you're lacking a lot of that helpfulness that he gets from being an executioner state so for a lot of you guys who don't know exactly what his a1 does here it actually allows him to whenever he's in that form he gets more damage at least on his skills here based on the amount of debuffs seeing that of course when mesa does get those said debuffs up here it makes him truly truly a man that is meant to be feared he is not the nicest of people here especially once we do get those things down at least looked at and everything like that nature it kind of makes them really more dangerous once you get that a1 now the a1 is utterly optional to some extent there are ways to kind of make mesa still be the absolute maniacal man himself as you can see but um at the end of the day he still needs a little bit of room to grow and that's where the issue comes in hand instead of actually being able to use him right off bat you will need to get that a1 to really make him shine through very brightly especially since we have uh this character actually dealing some decent damage only problem is Utaba and haru are next so keep that in mind now we've done playing at least devil's advocate here what about the pros for the character some of the good pros about this character is one we don't have many physical damagers. As I showed earlier, the only physical damager that we have in here is Skull. There aren't many of them that are actually in the entire list. And for at least Wonder here, the only like big boy physical damager that you're gonna be using for a persona is mostly going to be Yoshitsune. So when it comes to the physical side of things, we are lacking a lot of those characters that can really help us out, especially if you're trying to do any of the content that requires a lot of physical damages. Not to mention, with SOS being the thing here, physical damage is definitely going to be needed for that SOS because they usually change it up based on the new character that does drop, so he will be very helpful in that regard. Secondly, another pro with him is he is the first to bring out the mechanic not only with just changing forms, other than Makoto of course, but also proccing bleed. Bleed has not been a thing in this actual game, and it does a lot of damage, especially in the DLT aspect of things. Once you have a DLT team finally made up and actually get things rolling, he himself is really, really good. The only issue is if you don't have that bleed or if you don't have said DLT really stabilized, it's not gonna be the best for him. Now, with him being in your team, you're gonna have that stabilized down pack, so he's gonna deal the good damage that you really want him to deal. So surely do keep that in mind. Now, some priority list type deals here. Now, when it comes down to your pools, I already did a video on should you pull, stuff like that, or either I think I was gonna do a video about it, something like around that sort. But this is where things get a little bit challenging. If you're gonna go for this character, it is advised to immediately get him a zero, then his weapon. And if you are feeling a little froggy, go for the A1. A1, once again, is not mandatory. It is not a mandatory A1. For this character, in all honest opinion, you either get a zero or get a six. That is what I fully believe. And that is only just because we have Butaba, we have Haru coming out, we have Cherish coming out. Literally, it is going Mesa, Utaba, Cherish, Har or Haru immediately back to back and Cherish is going to be needed, especially if you play with Yusuke and Utaba is going to be a new freaking navigator who's probably going to be cracked as well as Haru being a side DPS, which is going to be most likely cracked. So it's going to be kind of hard to divvy up your pools. But if you have your pools and you're looking kind of set and you believe in your at least luck, definitely go with going for the a1 if you kind of just got your pool set but you don't believe in that extra luck to get the a1 i would highly suggest opt out and don't get the a1 just go with what you got get the a0 get the five star weapon and dip but that's primarily my thought process on process on this of course you guys as usual can go ahead and comment down below what you feel about this whole review what do you feel about the character do you think he's worth it? Do you think he's not? Overall, I say with him, he is definitely a worth for a pool, but is he worth that A1? I don't think so. So you guys might want to skip out on that one there. But until next time, everybody, stay safe, stay sharp, and stay determined. Peace out.